Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is going to cover a bit more at the FANG's decision to, at least for the moment, drop the M635. There was quite a bit of interest in this decision, so I reached out to some of my contacts to see why that might be and shared a bit more light on it. The footage here is again from the Cottonmouth e-bike, but this time rather than some high-speed footage, I'm riding on some very busy mixed use trails where looking out for other people and their safety is the primary consideration. A quick ask at this point, if you like what I do, please take a couple of seconds to drop a like on the video. It massively helps to share our content with the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate it very much. Okay, so to start with the torque sensing BBS HD, which the M635 effectively is, it, it's never really been pushed or promoted by Bafang. So if I look back on what's happened over the last few years, it does seem strange that a motor that lots of people have requested has not really been mentioned or promoted by the manufacturers themselves. At Eurobike, which is probably the world's biggest bike show last year, there was not really a single mention of it. There was one company showing the M635 and it wasn't Bafang themselves. It was a third party bike builder that I, I forget the name of now. This year at Eurobike, there was no mention at all of the M635 anywhere. And I do have a friend who does the entire week there and knows pretty much everyone. So Bafang themselves are not doing anything to promote or to make people aware of this motor. So you have to ask the question why? You would have thought if they wanted to build up excitement and potential sales of a motor that they will put resources into you know, things that would at least make you talk about it or, or know about it or, or see it. And I don't profess to understand why Bafang would not have an upgrade to a motor that essentially made their name not on display at Eurobike. But I do know there are some significant issues facing bicycle and e-bike markets right now. From doing a bit of digging and based on sales data and information from manufacturers, including the big companies like Bosch, it's very likely that overproduction and overstocking of both motors and complete bikes is causing some pretty big headwinds in the e-bike industry. And I don't know how well people remember trying to get a bike or bike components during early and mid COVID, but at least for me, it was nigh on impossible to get some things, especially the more popular things. Trying to get like Fox forks or suspension. No, it was sold out. Even things such as certain sizes of inner tubes was really difficult to get. Bike shops couldn't keep stock of fully built bikes. Prices in the second hand market were insane. But everything is kind of cyclical, so the industry response was to scale up production. In order to get stock, companies were forced to make really, really big orders. And now, post-COVID, demand is down, and these companies that made loads of bikes are now stuck with these huge inventories. And they're dumping them in the market, and you can see that with loads and loads of super cheap e-bikes that they're not really making that much money on, or even a loss in some cases, because places gambled on demand staying really high. Bosch, for example, have warehouses full of motors in Europe that are unsold because demand has dropped. And now if I look at Facebook Marketplace, bikes that were going for $2,000 are now down to like $500, at least where I live. So I guess how, how does this apply to the M635? And if you look at the FANG's figures for 2023, like their overall operating revenue fell from 42% from, uh, sorry, their overall operating revenue fell by 42% from $2.8 billion to $1.6 billion. And their profit fell even more from $66 million to $16 million in 2023. They are linking slower consumer demand and high inventory levels, leading to massively reduced orders for products. Mid-motor drive production, which would encompass the M635, for example, dropped by 53%. So, essentially for Bafang, the bottom has dropped out of the market for DIY motors. The overstocking of motors has not helped, but the overproduction of what are essentially cheap bikes is not helping things either. It used to be that 
making a DIY bike was a way to save a ton of money. But with things like the Endless Clones, the Super 73 bike, and endless cheap hub motor based fat bikes, I think that many of the people that maybe would have done a DIY have decided not to bother. I think there will always be a dedicated group of DIY folk that do it because they want to make something better. They want to make something unique. But the area of the market is shrinking, at least for now. There is also the continuing trend of everything becoming more and more proprietary. I could do like a whole series of videos in itself on this one. It seems that the bike industry is going down a similar path to the car industry, where it becomes more and more difficult for the end user to be able to make repairs. You have to take them to a dealer. Bosch has always been terrible for this, but you're now even seeing it with CYC motor and the Photon, where it's very difficult for a normal Joe to make home repairs to it. It's not a great situation because it leads to large amounts of waste creation and it goes against the whole right to repair movement, which is rightly, I think, gaining traction in both the EU and the US. It can also be argued that the Fang have been kind of on their way out of the DIY scene for a while now. Since the BBSHD, they've been far more focused on the hub motors they sell en masse on the cheap, whole bike makers, and also units that are canvas locked that slot into proprietary frames. I kind of think they'll keep making the BBSHDs and the O2s because it's easy for them to do it. But maybe they are looking at the numbers and the increased competition and their management is saying it's not worth it in this climate for them to continue with the M635. They are a shareholder based company and they are focused laser like on profits. So it may well be that they feel streamlining the company and cutting off certain products they don't feel will make them as much money as what they want to do. Perhaps if the market stabilizes and picks up again and companies work through inventory, then they might reconsider the production of the M635. To me, it would be a shame because it's only had a very short production run. There is the chance that this has been done to further improve the motor, but you would have thought they would say that to dealers if that was the case. Anyway, this is just me applying logic to the information that I've gathered. I don't have an ear with management at Bafang. I don't know their plans, but it makes sense to me. If you have any more information on this, please feel free to post it in the comments or our Discord community, and the link to join is in the description. Huge thanks to people that made it this far and to the people that directly support the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.